everyone. Come on in. Good morning. I'm clean up a little bit with my tea. Okay, come on in, just getting my work surface ready. If you like what I'm doing, please like the video on your way in, even if you're watching the replay. And uh, if you're new here, thank you and welcome. Feel free to shout out your city, state, or country if you're international. Um, and uh, just say hello. I'm going to wash my hands. Hope everyone is doing well. I'll go ahead and introduce myself while I'm getting ready. For anyone new here, I am Maggie, the substitute teacher. Um, I am on a health and wellness journey to age gracefully, and I I'm down so far 70 pounds with at least 30 more to go. I've completely changed the way that I eat by getting tested for food sensitivities, which was a cheek swab and some hair samples. Uh, so I have a list of foods right there on the fridge that I can have and a list of foods that I have to avoid. So what I do here on my channel, hey Belle, oh thank you, this is from South Africa, thank you so much, um, love to travel, um, more on that is coming soon, I'm so glad I have my community tab, thank you. Um, but yeah, so what I do on my channel, it's kind of turned into a <laughs> cooking demonstration. Uh, I cook all the time, I love to cook for others and I love to eat and I really like to craft recipes that I want to eat uh, from ingredients that I can eat. Um, so yeah, that's what we do here. I'm going to clean my glasses. So I've got two new things I'm going to be doing today. We're going to do a smoked salmon bagel and uh, it's actually a chuffle and then we're going to do a salad, a snatched waste salad that someone sent me uh, later on today. So that'll be fun. So I just printed out my ingredients. Usually I have everything laid out, but I am running a little bit behind this morning getting kid off to school and everything. So uh, sit back and relax. This shouldn't take long, but I'm going to go slow, uh, maybe on for about an hour and share whatever I can with you all. Um, Anytime I make a recipe for the first time, I always follow the uh, the directions to the tea. And then after that is when I kind of, you know, doctor it up the way that I want to. All right, so let me go get my printout. I haven't had my coffee yet this morning, so I may have to make a beverage for you guys. So I just got this off of Google, <laughs> smoked salmon bagel. Um, let's see, it's from Yuma Jawad, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I get my inspiration from so many places. You know, I've shared with some of you all that uh, I work from home gratefully, and I often have the TV on on mute during the day. Um, you know, I had to make a change from having the news on all of the time. It's just, you know, it wasn't giving me what I needed to stay uh, positive. Um, so I changed to the cooking channels and I just keep them on mute. And I would see, you know, beautiful meals being created and I would say, oh man, that looks so amazing. Oh shucks, but I can't have that and I can't have that and I can't have that. 
So then I would come up with ways to enjoy those amazing ingredients with the substitutions that are approved for me. So I'll be sharing with you guys, you know, my substitutions as I prepare my meals. Please feel free. If you can have the full flavor, enjoy it and have some for me. Um, for the first 40, you know, plus years, I'm 46 now, but you know, this is year three of my, uh, journey taking it seriously i have you know done diets like a lot of you all been on the typical american sad diet standard american diet and uh, or just sad um and you know lose weight gain weight um it was just a struggle and i just kind of maybe gave up and thought you know i'm just a big girl or big boned or supposed to be plus size and some of you have heard this story before you know but some of you are new here um but, you know, as we age, a lot of the extra weight that we carry around um, can turn into health problems. And that's what started to happen with me. Uh, I love to travel, obviously. Um, and I hurt my knee in Australia and it just never healed right. I had a lot of joint pain. I was limping along, taking a lot of pain pills. And that's not how I want to live. Uh, so found a metabolic specialist who took one look at me and she said, you know, you're not really that big. You just have a lot of inflammation. And I had never heard that before. Um, because again, I had just thought, oh, I'm just supposed to be big. Even though my mom, my dad, my brother are all average, average size. I was just the one that was the, you know, chubby kid or plus size. So anyway, you know, within two days of getting my test results back and changing the, my diet, the joint pain and all of those aches and pains went away. So I really eat to stay healthy and the weight is coming off as a byproduct. Um, and I feel, you know, amazing. I used to have elevated cholesterol. Now that's normal. I used to have uh, borderline blood pressure. Now that's normal. And I was pre-diabetic and now that's normal. And I don't take any medications. It's simply by changing my diet. Uh, I did work out this morning since I work from home. I like to stay moving since I'm sitting. Um, so I did get a workout in this morning. But enough about that. Let's get started. Let me get my ingredients out. Oh, I was talking about inspiration. So this smoked salmon bagel, I remember the first one that I had was on a cruise years ago and I loved it. I think we had room service or something. It was really nice. Um, but uh, <laughs> I got a catalog for a, you know, a shopping uh, warehouse club came in the mail. And sometimes I just like to flip through catalogs just for inspiration, you know, decorating or whatnot. And I saw this beautiful spread. I think they were selling bagels. And so I was like, oh, that sounds good. So here's my substitute version. All right. <laughs> Okay, so when I get started with cooking, um, one second. All right, so when I get started with cooking, I like to make sure that I have all my ingredients laid out in front of me on my workstation. Uh, and that's what I've taught the kids too. I have taught both boys. I have two teenage boys. I have taught them how to cook. Of course, they say it tastes better when I do it. Um, but um, you wanna make sure that you have all of your ingredients out. So I'm just looking at the recipe list here. So two bagels have. We're actually going to make a chaffle. It's a cheese waffle. Egg and cheese are the ingredients. Um, that's what I'm going to have instead of bagel because I'm sensitive to gluten, which means I can't have grains. I love bread, but bread doesn't love me back. It makes me really stiff and achy. So I have a substitute for that. I like to use this gravy boat I got from Walmart uh, and my chopstick to stir. So you guys will see that. All right, four ounces of smoked salmon, thinly sliced. I just got this uh, wild sockeye smoked salmon um, from BJ's, which is a warehouse club in my area, kind of like uh, Sam's Club or Costco. Any smoked salmon will do. I remember from my honeymoon years ago. God, that was 20 years ago. I'm amicably divorced now, but we took a cruise to Alaska and I remember having some excellent salmon there. 
may have bought some and brought it back. I can't remember. Okay, four ounces of cream cheese. So I can't have cream cheese because I can't have cow dairy. So my substitute for cream cheese is goat's cheese. So I'm going to be using the Chef Chavry. Uh, let me grab it for you. This is usually what I do before I go live, get everything out so I'm not digging around. But Shabri, this is the goat's cheese that I'm going to be using. This is a very mild and soft, spreadable goat's cheese. I put it on crackers. I put it on fruit. This is a good, it's got a little bit of um, seasoning in there from the crackers. I was just dipping them in there. Um, usually, if you're new to goat's cheese, it is an acquired taste. Um, it can have like a very pungent, strong taste, kind of like a blue cheese, but this one is very mild. I've gotten it from Publix, and then I found uh, an online shop. I think it's cheeseloversshop.com, and I buy it in bulk. So that's my substitution for uh, cream cheese. I also use it as a substitute for ricotta when I'm making Italian dishes, that type of thing. I am going to make some coffee. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. I have some fresh lemons here. I guess we can, might as well, do the real thing, right? If you have the lemon juice in the jar, you could probably use that. I also have some lemon extract, and I was wondering about that, but I'll squeeze a fresh lemon since I have them. There's so much that you can do with lemon. We zested them when we made our crab cakes. Um, I'm going to squeeze them. Let me get my lemon squeezer. And then we try to use everything so that we don't waste. And uh, I will, you know, use the rind or whatever it's left. And you can put that in tea um, for the apple cider vinegar tea or anything that you like. Whatever you like. <laughs> um, one tablespoon's fresh dill. Uh, tablespoon. I didn't have fresh dill. I should have put some on my order, but I do have some dill. This is just a uh, Walmart uh, dill weed. This isn't a seasoning that I use very often. I hope it's still... Well, we'll use it today. Just expired, so we'll see. But the dill is optional. The recipe says that you could use parsley, and I do have parsley too. So if it's good, maybe I'll make it again. Um, I'm supposed to eat whitefish on my plan. Salmon, I don't. I love it, but I don't eat this very often. I'm trying to be strict and loose. I did have a little sugar-free chocolate last night, but um, this is just a, a little treat. Salt and pepper to taste. as per usual. Now it says one to two Persian cucumbers peeled in ribbon. Unfortunately for me, I'm sensitive to cucumber. I know, right? That came up on my list. So I can't have cucumber, I can't have pickle, but I am going to use tomato as a substitute. I was trying to think of what vegetable would be, you know, a substitute for a cucumber, kind of with a mild taste, you know, a little bit firm flesh, but, you know, watery on the inside with the seeds. So we're going to go with the um, tomato. And instead of peeled and ribbons, I'm going to slice this. I know, was it Val or Amethyst that said use the mandolin? Uh, I don't know if I want to get that out, but I have a little slicer I'll use. I'll show you guys what that is. And then red onion. I think this came in the giveaway box, so I want to go ahead and cut this up. Red onion is good. I like onion. I like onion. Uh, mostly sauteed. Uh, great on a burger, on a steak. Um, I like them, you know, in so many different dishes. That's a great vegetable to prep and have, you know, ready to pinch and put in soups. You've seen green onion in my egg drop soup from yesterday. Um, but red onion is a milder onion to me if you're going to eat raw, which I'm going to do raw on my uh, smoked salmon bagel. Um, I would recommend the red onion. And then capers, okay. Okay. 
Capers are some kind of plant. This is just Walmart. I don't use these too often. Um, I think they come from some type of flower, but it's got a nice briny, like pickly taste. Um, so again, that's just going to be like a little bit of a light garnish. Okay, let me get my apron. Hope you are all doing well. I don't know if you guys have had your breakfast yet. I am Le Chocolat. This is from Paris. I saw this in a shop and I just had to have it. Um, all right, I'm gonna make some coffee. I haven't had my coffee yet this morning, so I'll make a beverage and walk you guys through that. And then we will do our, I think I'll do my chaffle first and then we'll do the, um, the, the toppings, the cream cheese, goat cheese, and smoked salmon. All right, so coffee. All right, so my Keurig is out of water again, but uh, this is one of my favorite mugs. Yes, I got it from Paris as well. It's just uh, Ceci Bon, so nice. <laughs> That's all I got. But, you know, seriously, I know this is, you know, this is me. This is very girly. But one of the things that's helped me be very successful, you know, I'm not very. It's going to be my lifelong journey, right? This is going to be something I have to stay on top of. But having little dishes and plates and things that are just for me, of course, I enjoy cooking for others. And, you know, I have the standard dishes, but it kind of gives me something to look forward to when I'm making something for me. So I think about the experience, you know, whether it's low carb or low calorie. All right. So putting some water in my curry. So to make my coffee, I like it light and sweet. Hey, Val. Oh, Paris is oh good. Make your coffee. Come on in. Come on in. Um, I've traveled a lot of places. Um, Paris was just, it was just everything that you think it would be. You know, I enjoyed it. You know, the cuisine is, you know, very light. Um, just good quality ingredients and less of them you know the fashion now the people they do have a reputation for being a little bit um but i i loved it the architecture it was amazing absolutely recommend it all right so you guys have seen me make my beverages before on my test results it revealed that i am I was more acidic and i needed to drink more alkaline water so you can buy it already uh, made that's fine to me it's expensive so i just use the alkaline drops and a couple drops before I make any beverage, um, it turns you know regular water into alkaline water. Why is that important? Um, I was drinking water all the time, and it wasn't staying inside to hydrate me. It was just kind of you know going through. So now that I drink more alkaline water, it actually stays um, to hydrate me. All right, so I love half and half, but I can't have it. So I'm using this creamer from Califia Farms. This one says uh, better half. So coconut cream and almond milk. This is a good blend. I've used their coconut creamer, did not like it. It was just very strong with the coconut and I like coconut, but not as much as that. And it wasn't, um, it, it, I wouldn't say it was watery, but it was a little light. Um, this one is a blend of uh, coconut milk and almond milk. And I like it light and sweet, so I'm pretty liberal. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. Pretty liberal with my creamer. That's something that I had to change because I would say, okay, well, I'm not drinking milk and I'm not eating cheese uh, and yogurt, but I was still putting half and half in my coffee. And uh, uh, dairy is one of the things that I can't have. I can't have cow dairy. All right, so I buy this. I bought this on maybe it came in the giveaway but I don't know bought it online um but I bought this in a six pack on Amazon it is shelf stable which means um it doesn't have to be refrigerated until you open it so that's uh good to know because a lot of creamers you know will take up space in the fridge all right so recycling that and then for sweeteners I think I'm going to do the vanilla flavor burst. This is the skinny syrup, zero sugar, zero calorie. I love keeping these in the car, in my purse. Anytime I'm out, I, I always order my beverages unsweet. And then, oh, this is out too. Okay. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. But it's very concentrated. A little goes a long way. So you can get your iced coffee or your iced teas plain. And then you put this in. doesn't have to be refrigerated. They have three different flavors. Vanilla, mocha, and caramel. And they sell it by the three pack. Or you can get one of each or you can get three of one. Love that. All right. So now I put my alkaline drops, my creamer, and my sweetener um, into my mug. And then I like to brew my coffee. I'm just doing regular old Folgers in the Keurig. Brew it into my mug. Okay, so coffee should be done. I also have just one of these little square plates. Uh, Belle wants to know if that's stevia. I'll show you. The skinny syrups, no, but they do have a stevia option, and I'll show you. Um, but what I was going to say about the plates, just like the cups and the little pitchers that I have, um, I like to have something special just for me when it comes to uh, serving wear. Um, so that I kind of enjoy the experience of dining because for me, eating is an experience. All right, so Val, one second. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple options. Stevia does come from a plant, so it's natural, and that's what's approved for me. Some things with stevia I can have, like the chocolate that I had last night was sweetened with stevia. Sometimes stevia by itself can have a little bit of a bite to, to it. So if you don't like that bitter aftertaste, you may or may not like it. Let me grab my coffee. So here's what we have. I like it light and sweet. And I think I'm going to put a little coconut cream on the top. Yummy. So I'm just going to top with a little bit. This is uh, from Aldi's. This is just coconut uh, whipped cream made from coconut milk. You can get it from coconut milk. You can get it from almond milk. Um, just a little, I'll show you, just a little uh, barista experience. Completely optional, but again, you know, like if I were serving myself, I think I'll take a picture for my community tab. One moment. Thank you all so much. Please like the video on your way in if you like what I'm doing. Um, this uh, whipped cream will settle pretty quickly. But you can make a lot of the, you know, barista drinks at home, and I could dust that with a little bit of. Um, you know, cocoa powder. All right, so focus, Maggie. Steve, um, Val, let me get to your question. Ooh, fun. Okay, so what I put on my coffee just now was this uh, simple, no, skinny syrups flavor burst. This one is sweetened with Splenda. This is the mocha option. So you can see they have it for chocolate flavor too. So this is sweetened with sucralose, which is Splenda. So most of the skinny syrups, and this is the big one, you know, like you see in the coffee shops that you can put the pump in or I just pour. They have so many different flavors like this one, um, white chocolate. So again, sweetened with um, their regular line is sweetened with Splenda. They do have some other options. So this one, simple syrup is basically like a sugar syrup without sugar. So this one has no flavor, but it's sweet. So you can put this in and you can see this one is sweetened with monk fruit and agave. So you have that option if you don't like stevia. And again, it's one gram of sugar, not zero, but still that's a lot better than imagine what, you know, a coffee shop coffee would um, have as far as sugar count. Excuse me. Um, take a look. You might be surprised. Look in the app. 
you know, when you're ordering and just see, you know, what's inside there. And then lastly, they do have these brands, this, this line, the keto syrup. Is this one made with stevia? I'm not keto, but I like certain keto recipes. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can tell right there. Sweetened with monk fruit, erythritol, and stevia. So this has been approved for me. You know, Splenda is not the best. It is laboratory made as opposed to man made, but I say do what you can. Oh, and then I also brought this out. Vel Sweet Leaf, uh, Steve, uh, Sweet Drops. I don't like this in beverages, but I do like this. And when I make my pancakes, I like it as an ingredient. All right, speaking of pancakes, let's make these chaffles. So for me, it's fun to try all kind of different things. And if you like it, I keep it. If I don't, you know, I don't. Washing my hands again. All right, so in case anyone hasn't heard, chaffles are all the rage. And it's basically like, you know, a, a bread substitute without grains. You can make chaffles uh, sweet. You can make them savory. You can do whatever you want. The base is just two ingredients. It's eggs. I know, Mr. Akata, me and my eggs. Uh, eggs, and then, you're so welcome, sweetie. Um, eggs and cheese. Oh, I'm gonna have to shred this cheese. All right, you can buy um, already shredded cheese. Um, this is the cheese that I'm gonna be using. You guys know that I'm sensitive to cow dairy, so I have to use the goat's cheese. This one is another one that I recommend because it has a very mild uh, flavor. And it's a very good melting cheese. But as you can see, it comes in a block, so I need to shred it myself. I can shred it by hand, but I'm going to go ahead and get the crank out. Uh, this is just something that I do and prep from time to time. I was going to say something. Oh, if you buy the already bagged shredded cheese, there's nothing. Well, I learned that there are extra ingredients in that cheese to keep it from clumping together. And so if you just want to you know, eat as natural, as clean as you can, you can shred your own cheese and it's easy. Excuse me. Okay, Val tried. Yeah. I say, you know, do what works for you. Look, I tried a lot of stuff. This is what works for me. You have to find something that you can sustain because that's the only way that you'll maintain your weight loss. So this is what I have. You guys have seen it before. It's my crank shredder. I bought it on Amazon. Um, I'm going to use it to shred my own cheese. It's got a little suction cup bottom so it sticks on the counter and doesn't move. Um, you can use this. I think it came with three different attachments or blades or whatever. But this has been great for me to, um, to shred my own cheese. So I'll do that for you all. Just taking this from one of the kids' lunch boxes, but you know, having meal prep containers or containers that when you um, have your ingredients already prepped and ready, it just makes cooking so much easier because you have what you need at your fingertips. All right, let me grab a knife. <sighs> Sorry, y'all, I'm moving a little slow, but you know what? There's no reason to rush in my class as your substitute teacher. Feel free to multitask. So I'm just going to take my cheese block and I'm going to cut it down the middle one time. So now I have my cheese and you can see here this pepper jack. It's got obviously the little peppers and spices in it, but it's not spicy. To me, it has a very good close to like, you know, regular cheese flavor, but they also have a mozzarella and they have a cheddar of the Leclerc. I tried them all. And again, this is my favorite. To me, the mozzarella and the cheddar had more of that like goat funky taste. So if you want closest to cow dairy, I like the pepper jack. All right. So my shredder has a little finger guard in here. So I had my cheese block. I just cut it in half and I'm going to put one in front of the other and then it's going to go into the grinder while I um, crank with one hand. So I have my little bowl underneath 
my finger guard for safety. So kids could help with this, you know, with supervision. And I just turn. So literally in less than 30 seconds. Ugh. It would probably go uh, easier if I just put one of those little blocks in at a time, but I do the whole thing. Mmm, mmm. Yamola. Okay, so have a little piece of cheese. <laughs> Y'all know I get excited. It's time to eat. Okay, so you can see what we have here. My shredded cheese. So I'm gonna use this for my chaffle. To me, shredding your own, really easy. It melts better. It tastes better to me. But look, no judgment here. Use what you have. We all start somewhere. Do what works for you. All right, let me disassemble my shredder. So this is the, the blade that I use for shredding cheese. I think I've used it to uh, shave chocolate, um, but they also have one that's like a, a slicer. So I want all of my cheese, so I'm just using my chopstick to anything that's scraped up on this side, because y'all know I'm greedy. I only eat two meals a day. So today we're going to do the smoked salmon uh, bagel. And then we're going to do a snatched waste salad. If there's anything that you guys want me to cook for you, feel free to, you know, drop it in the comments or the chat, the recipe. And uh, I'll make it with my substituted ingredients. We also do our live cook-alongs here. We've had a couple with Lisa where we've done the crab cakes and the squash lasagna. So if you guys want to come on screen and cook with me, you can get your ingredients and we can do it at the same time. All right, so let me get my work surface together. Good morning. Come on in. Welcome, welcome. So glad you all are here. It really makes me happy because honestly, I cook all the time and I would be in here anyway just doing it for myself. So the fact that you all join me in the kitchen just makes my day. All right, so again, for our bagel substitute, we are going to be making a chaffle. I made one once before when I did the pastrami sandwich. This is a great, very versatile. I've made chaffle pizzas, chaffle for sandwich bread, chaffle for waffle. Today's gonna be chaffle for um, bagel. So I have my old rinky uh, dash griddle. You can see the light is gone. But it still works. So this is a little mini waffle maker. You can get them at Target for $12.99. I'm going to try, I'm going to do the one that I know is going to work, and I'm going to try something else. So the batter that we're going to make will make two bagel slices. So like if you were making a sandwich, I'll show you how to do just enough for, um, you know, top and bottom slice. But um, I also got out my dash griddle. So Dash has so many of these little gadgets. So I won't be using this stove today, um, but these are great. You know, kids with supervision, if you're traveling, if you're um, um, dorm room, hotel room, anything. All right, because I want to make one with the waffle because I know that crisps up the way that I like. And I also want to make one that's like a bread slice. It may be an epic fail. But we'll see. So when you plug it in, and I'm not even going to do any butter. I usually do butter when I do the pancakes because I want that nice brown. I'm not going to do any butter because the, for me, when I cook with cheese, like with the quesadilla, you get a little bit of oil that comes out of the cheese anyway. So that gives me the, the moisture that I need. So I'm not going to add any extra. Ooh, hungry. Okay. Focus, Maggie. So when you um, turn on your, when you plug in your dash, because I'm going to have to do it on the counter, so I'm just showing you guys. When you plug it in, just like a waffle maker in a hotel, the light will come on, you know, as it heats up, and then the light will go off when it's ready. You're going to pour your batter in here, and then you close it. The good thing is that this cooks really fast. It'll cook on both sides. And then I think when it's done, the light comes off. I take a peek from time to time, and one of the ways, you know, mom taught me to cook, um, use all your senses. I check for color, so I want to make sure it has that nice golden brown that I like. All right. So we're going to go ahead and plug both of these up. 
One's gonna be the waffle, one's gonna be the griddle. Put them side by side on the counter. Okay, so for our chocolate ingredients, hey everybody, come on in. Again, eggs. <laughs> Mr. Kata, your favorite. Eggs and shredded cheese. So I just shredded my goat's cheese. I'm only going to make a small portion. So I'm going to use one egg. You can make as much as you want. Crack this into the bowl. You can season it. Again, you can make it sweet and savory. So I've got my grass, grass, glass gravy boat with one egg. I'm going to wash my hands. And y'all know I eyeball stuff. This is probably going to be about a quarter cup of cheese, but literally I just take a healthy pinch. And what I'm looking for is I want my uh, batter to be pourable, but not jiggly. And I know that's not a scientific way. Well, I'm not a cook, y'all. I'm not a chef. I'm just a home cooker. That's what my boys call me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it and I'm watching. Um, if it's too like, like that, add more cheese because the cheese, it's what the cheese is, what's going to give it the stiffness and the crispness. You know, I don't know how you guys like your bagels. If you like your bagels, you know, just straight out of the fridge or out of the, um, you know, pantry, just soft. I like my bagels when I used to eat them. All right, so you can see it's a little bit liquidy, jiggly. So I'm adding another little point of cheese. Genesis, ask your questions away, my dear. Please come on in with the questions. Y'all don't have to wait. Um, I'm going to add some more cheese, just another pinch. So all together, it's probably, okay, lights went off. Focus, Maggie. Uh, all together, I don't know, maybe like a quarter cup. And then just stir it in so you've gotten a beaten egg. And then it's nice and thick. I'm looking for the consistency of like a, I don't know, like a chunky, I'll show you guys, like a chunky super stew. So again, just one egg and you can use mozzarella, you can use um, cheddar. The drier cheeses will give you a crispier chaffle. All right, so if you guys can see now, I can pour it but it's not as jiggly as it was before. All right, so I'm going to pour half on my waffle maker and half on my griddle. Okay, here goes the waffle maker. Love that sound. Okay, one second y'all. And I'm gonna use my, um, since it just kind of comes out in one big clump, I'm using my chopstick, I was about to say Q-tip, it is not a Q-tip, just to spread it out to the sides so that I can get one nice like round bagel slice. Close that and then I'm going to put the remaining of the batter on the griddle. I haven't done this before but I want to see if I can make a slice. If you guys were with me for my cranberry cinnamon pancakes or the blueberry uh, pancakes, I use the griddle so it's flat on both sides. I'm spreading it out with the uh, chopstick. I like the chopstick because it won't scrape these nonstick surfaces. Surfaces, And then closing. Toasted, oh my God, yeah, I gotta have a bagel toasted. And I liked, oh my God, y'all, butter and cream cheese and jelly and all that. Oh, Genesis, welcome. You have found your tribe. I am gluten sensitive too. So no grains here even though lead attorney makes fun of me and my gluten-free pancakes. Um, I don't know if you want specific advice or if there's like a, an item or a recipe that you want to try and make gluten-free, but yeah, absolutely. And y'all, it's new for me too. You know, I thought gluten sensitivity was just another one of those things because y'all know we grew up eating whatever, but um. Gluten is basically, as I understand, I, when I hear gluten, I think dough. So as much uh, bread as I used to like, you know, that when you see people making like fresh pizza dough and, or kneading dough and they get that long, stringy, like chewy, doughy texture, the inside of a bagel, that's gluten. 
it kind of gives, and gluten, unfortunately, is added into a lot of stuff that doesn't need gluten, like ice cream, I learned, because gluten, it's not so much a taste, but it's like that chewiness, that texture. So like if you're eating ice cream and you want it to kind of have that pull, um, they add gluten in so many things that unfortunately don't need it. So I'm right there with you. Ah, yes, Genesis, you are home. You all, so on my, what I eat is usually lean protein, some veggies and um, uh, fruit. We'll talk about that. Low starch, um, little starch, and basically as close to zero sugar as I can. So yes, everything I have to make is gluten-free. And I've been tested three times every year. Excuse me, some things have fallen off, but gluten has stayed on the list, y'all, so... When I'm traveling or when I'm on vacation, I will enjoy my bread. But uh, for me, I have a lot of aches and pains. Um, my knee, you know, like when you have an old injury and it's kind of like you can feel the weather or whatever in your knee. Um, but when I eat off of my plan, all those back aches and knee aches and all of that stuff comes back and I need a pain pill every day. And I thought it was just, oh, I'm just getting older. But no, when I changed my diet, all that went away. All right, so let me clean up. It's a coagulant. So thank you, Belle. Thank you guys for helping inform everybody. So yeah, gluten is a coagulant. Mm -hmm. So it keeps stuff sticky and keeps it together. And Jenna says she was married to bread and cheating with cheese. Oh my. You are not alone. I was the queen. Man, y'all, it was so bad. Um... You know when you go to a restaurant and they bring the bread basket out? Like, I could, I'm embarrassed, but hey, I used to be able to eat, like, the whole bread basket. Like, you know, whether it's rolls or cheddar bay or yeast rolls or whatever, I could eat the whole thing. And then, like, I would ruin my dinner because I loved it so much. Now I'm disciplined. I will have one piece if I have any at all. But yeah, y'all, it's a struggle. All right, I'm taking a peek at my waffle maker. Where did I get the cheek and hair test done? I'll tell you. Ooh, err. I still had some blueberry on my waffle, so it looks a little crazy. Okay. Um, so I went to I don't know if you can see locked in wellness. So this is a metabolic specialist here in the Atlanta area. She takes clients all over. You can mail in your cheek swabs with a Q-tip, like in a Ziploc bag, and take, you know, some baby locks of hair. Um, I wanted the full program with support and everything. Um, it is an investment, but for me, it's an investment in my health. Um, but you can do, like I know Everly Well has a mail-in um, food sensitivity test. That one is a finger stick. And then you mail it in and you get a report back. And then I've also heard um, some people can get it done at their doctor. You can ask for a food sensitivity test at your doctor and they can run the panel and then let you know what your body processes well and what your body struggles with. Because what I found out is, you know, some foods, when you eat them, your body just processes them well. You're running like a race car and, you know, everything is humming along. And some things just kind of hang around. And that's where the inflammation and the bloating and the weight gain and the joint pain for me was coming in but you don't know any better and so you're just eating it eating it eating it your body is just like screaming on the inside um, so yeah I used my HSA health savings account to pay uh, for my program but um, I've been cooking you know since my mom taught me when I was little so I've just changed uh, the ingredients for what I can have all right all right so my chaffle okay I'm gonna I'm show y'all I always show you whether it's good or bad I had some blueberries left on there, so it's got a little bit of a, <laughs> but it's okay. It's still our vehicle. Um, absolutely, Genesis. You're welcome, sweetie. Uh, I am going to uh, show you guys my chaffle. So I'm using a little spatula. Uh -uh. Let me turn it over. Okay, so this is what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to show you guys the bottom. I'm not going to hide from you. But you can see here we've got a nice crispy waffle. But I had some blueberries. So this is going to go on the bottom of the plate. So when it comes, and again, this is our bagel substitute, right? So it just came out of the waffle maker. I'm going to put it in my air fryer on just a wire rack so that it can kind of cool while I get my smoked salmon together. But uh, if your waffle maker was 
clean. This is what you're looking for. And this is the color and the texture that I like. All right. So let me put this in the air fryer. All right. So it'll cool and crisp up there. Now the other one. All right. I'm going to open up. This is the one on the griddle. It looks more eggy. So if you remember, I put one on the, um, griddle waffle maker and one on the griddle. So this it's okay. It's more eggy. I'm still going to eat it, but, um, for the bagel substitute, especially for the crunchiness, I would use the waffle maker, save the griddle for pancakes, or it's a, a really good like fried egg or like a sandwich. So either way, I'm going to put this next to his brother. <laughs> We'll see if it crisps up. Okay, class. Go ahead, Genesis, y'all. In my class, you can multitask, do whatever you need to do. I will always be here for you. I cook every day, so I'm going to post every day. Um, and yeah, or watch the replay. Whatever works for you. Whatever you like. Um, okay, now in a small bowl, combine the cream cheese, lemon juice, fresh dill, salt, and pepper. So we're going to make our spread for our bagel. So let me see. I'm trying to be fancy for y'all in these glass bowls so you can see like they do in the cooking class, cooking uh, shows. But y'all know this ain't a cooking show. Okay, cream cheese. So for my, uh, I'm gonna half half everything. Um, this recipe that I found online, you could actually change it since it's just me. I'm going to do half portions. So two bagels, negative. We're doing one. Four ounces of sm smoked salmon. We'll get to that. Uh, hold on. Cream cheese. Let's make our spread. So it says four ounces of cream cheese. Y'all, I'm going to eyeball. So my chavri, this is my cream cheese substitute. If you can have dairy, use regular cream cheese, Philadelphia or store brand, whatever you like whatever you like. Um, it says two ounces. I'm just going to get like a tablespoon and scoop it out so you guys can see. I think Sonia was on yesterday asking if, um, this cheese, this goat's cheese is soft and spreadable right out of the, um, fridge and it is. So again, this one, the goat cheese log, this one is pretty firm. You'll want to let that sit out, but this goat's cheese block, the chavri, this one is nice and uh, spreadable right out of the fridge. That's why I love it on crackers. I'll dip in there, just get in there. It's so yummy. All right. I don't know if this is two ounces. I'm just eyeballing. I get a so I'll show you guys like see how just easy it is to maneuver. Don't want to lose any of it. All the cheese. Okay. Does anybody <laughs> lick the spoon? When my mom used to cook, um, you know, desserts or whatever, and she's frosting, my brother and I would uh, hang around to lick the spoon. <laughs> Shabri, exactly. Let me know if you got it uh, much better. Um, but then, you know, it was like, it was like that dance. It's like, you want to be there when she's uh, cleaning up. But then, you know, if you come in the kitchen, mom's going to be like, get the dish. Or at least for me, you know, you need to help. You're not just going to sit here and eat. Okay. So we've got our cream cheese, lemon juice. <sighs> for you all, I'm going to use fresh lemons. I have some raggedy lemons in there that I had um, zested, but you know what? I'm feeling fancy. So we're gonna actually use a fresh lemon. If you have that green bottle of lemon juice, use what you have. All right, I'm gonna wash it. So we're doing smoked salmon. Citrus is very good on, um, 
all kinds of um, seafood if you like it. All right, let me get a cutting mat. All right, so is it Belle or Amethyst, my go-go gadget girls? I get to use my lemon squeezer. You can do this in your hands. It's really not that serious, but y'all know I buy these gadgets because I feel inspired. And one other thing I shared with you guys before, I didn't know this, these cutting boards with the little ridges here, it's for um, if you cook some, cut something that um, could leak, like uh, if you're resting uh, you know, a prime rib or roast or chicken, so it catches all the juices. All right, so I'm just cutting my lemon in half, crossways like this. <laughs> I know. Ah. All right, so your lemon squeezer, I have one for lemon. And I have one for lime. I just got these at Walmart. You know, I think it came in a little two pack because I was feeling fancy. But what it does is it lets you get the juice and it catches the seeds. So you open it up and then you want to put your lemon in with the juice side or the pulp side down like that. And then when you squeeze it hard, which I'm going to do into a bowl, which I need to get. <laughs> I'll try and do it with one hand, y'all. Not that strong. I'm strong, but um, and it says two tablespoons of lemon juice. Again, I'm not gonna really try and measure it, but it gets the juice without the seeds. Okay, Bell is our gadget girl. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna have to do down here, and then I'll lift it up because I my hand's not big enough to. Okay, so getting our. Mm. Fresh lemon juice, not bad. You can um, make your own lemonade, even though I'm done. So you see my lemon rind or lemon half is still in here. This is not trash to me. I'm gonna actually, I made some tea earlier. I'm gonna dump this whole thing. I think this is my Arnold Palmer half lemonade, half tea. Put it in there, hot or cold, don't waste. All right. And so we'll save this for later, maybe for the salad we'll make later. Um, lemon juice. So it says two tablespoons, but I'm doing a half portion. Like I'm measuring. So this is one tablespoon. I'm just going to pour. That's about right. I guess you could do extra. All right. So we're going to put that in with our, for me, Chavri goat's cheese. For you, could be cream cheese. All right, and then fresh dill. I didn't have fresh dill, so I'm having to use this from the seasoning rack. I gotta go through all this stuff that I have, but if it's yummy, I'll order some fresh dill. And it says one tablespoon, but since I'm doing half. Alexa, how much is half of a tablespoon? So half a tablespoon is one and a half teaspoon. Oh, it's brand new. See, I buy these ingredients and then haven't even used them and they go bad. You know, when you're cooking, I mean, I get inspired and so I like to do all this fancy stuff, but really salt, pepper, um, you know, a good all purpose seasoning, you know, maybe some lemon pepper. Don't let that spice rack behind me fool you. I just, you know, I get inspired and I order stuff and then I'm like, why do I have this? Or why do I have three of these? So you guys are helping me go through everything. Um, hashtag, hashtag go, go gadget girl. Exactly. All right. So our dill is another seasoning plant. I'm going to smell it. It's a little strong. So we'll try, I'm just gonna do, uh, okay, so that's one teaspoon. It said one and a half. It's, it's kind of bright. It probably goes really well with the citrus. So we've got our dill, our lemon juice, and our uh, cream cheese for y'all, goat's cheese for me, and salt and pepper. All right, that's not bad. I'm moving slow because I'm making this for the first time, y'all, afterwards. And that's just how cooking is. You know, we all start somewhere. 
Um, you know, when the boys see me and they're like, Mom, how do you do that? I'm like, I started young. Nana was on me until I got it right. So if you mess up, it's okay. Salt and pepper. All right. So I'm going to mix this up. This is going to be our cream cheese spread for our bagel. Now the dill does give it a nice color though. And they said if you don't like dill, you could substitute for parsley. Ooh, I'm loving this. Um... <sighs> I'm getting excited. Does anybody else get excited for food? Oh my God, I'm so lame, but I love it. Okay, now to me, this is a little bit uh, runny. I think either maybe a little heavy on the lemon juice and I did the math in my head. Um, I may add a little bit more shabri just to thicken it up. So again, as you're cooking, yes, use the recipe as a guide, but we all know what a cream cheese spread is, right? I want to go ahead and spread that all over my bagel and I don't want it to run off the side. So I'm going to get a little bit more of my um, chavri so you guys can see like the goat's cheese, kind of like the, what is it, Dairy Queen, the blizzard, you know, they keep it upside down. And so I'm going to add this in here just to thicken it up. I should have tasted it. It is tart. I do like it. I think with the uh, smoked salmon, which is going to be creamy and, you know, like an oily fish, it'll balance out very nicely. But yeah, I am tasting the lemon, y'all. I'm getting excited. Oh my God, I'm so lame. <sighs> okay, stir Maggie. All right, this is getting much better. I'll show you guys. Just getting everything off the sides. So you can see now, it's still a little bit um, runny, but not nearly as bad. So, you know, keep going if you like, but we've got our spread. Now it's time to assemble. Do they make ice cream with goat's milk? Well, I don't know, I haven't seen it, but I have had amazing, here in the Decatur area, there is like a bookstore that has an ice cream shot. It's a vegan ice cream shop, and I'm not vegan. Y'all see I eat meat, but they have like this coconut ice cream made with coconuts milk. Oh my gosh. But you could make, I'm sure if they make goat butter and goat cheese, I've seen goat yogurt. I don't know. Maybe look that up and uh, let me know. <laughs> I like goat milk, goat dairy products as an ingredient. I don't know if I would like them so much by themselves because that, you know, kind of like <laughs> goat taste in a dessert. I don't know. I may have to look that up and I'll try it, you know, but it's probably got sugar in it, <laughs> but we'll see. All right. Toast the bagels. <laughs> we already made our chaffle. So let me get my plate. Okay, again, this is what we have. I wish I had made two of these. And it's got that blueberry from the waffle maker, but you know what? For presentation and the picture. All right, yeah. Um, this one was the waffle maker. This one was the griddle. You can see this is eggy. Um, I'm still gonna eat it, but this is going on the photo off. All right, toast the bagels, then spread the cream cheese mixture on both sides. Okay. Much better says I don't have cheese in my diet. Okay. Um, you know, you can use the goat's cheese. Like I said, I use it as a ricotta substitute when I'm making Italian dishes. Um, let me think about that. All right, I'm just putting a dollop of my spread on. We'll see you guys. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the other one, even though I wish it were a waffle or a chaffle, but I'm using all this spread and I'm gonna lick this spoon. <laughs> so greedy, but that's the best part. 
It's for research purposes. You taste it to make sure that it's um, to your liking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It is very bright. All right, so we have our bagel. I'm gonna use the other spoon and just spread this on here. Let me lay it down. We're working on equipment so that you guys can see like I'm a proper cooking show. <laughs> All right. So I just used a little mini spatula to spread it out to the side. So just like you would uh, cream cheese, but this has got lemon juice and the dill is a very, it's got some citrus notes in it too. So it's a very bright. All right. So we've got our bagel halves with our um, spread. It's good. Mm. Woo. I'm awake. Mm. Add the cucumbers. I can't have cucumber. Believe it or not, that's the one vegetable that came up on my list. So I'm going to slice a tomato. If you saw the picture, it had some beautiful like green cucumber shaved very thin slice into like ribbons. But I've had smoked salmon with a tomato. So you guys have seen me use this before. Hold on, let me get this off the edge. I can hear my dad now. Move it away from the edge. You're going to drop it. All right, let me have some coffee because that dill was kind of like... Excuse me. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Cook. Oh, <laughs> much better. You're so welcome. Um, yes, please look, get your inspiration and do what works for you. Y'all, I have been on this journey and I am always trying new things and uh, either brave enough or dumb enough to try them here. If I like it, you'll be able to tell. And if I don't like it, you'll be able to tell. Okay, so let's get our tomato slices. So I have my little tomato here. And again, I'm using my, I don't know what this is, uh, slicer from Pamper Chef. I'll use this for the tomato and the onion. You just literally poke it in and then it allows you, I'll just use the same knife. Um, it allows you to make really even uh, slices, not as thin as the cucumber ribbons, but you know, it's just for my bagel. So I'm going to go ahead and slice the whole thing while I've got it here. And this is another little prep that you can do great on burgers, uh, tomato slices. Oh, did you guys see, has anybody made the tomato snack? I may have to do that later with the Parmesan. Oh, Y'all. Let me know if you want me to make that uh, tomato and oregano. And I've got the goat's cheese right here. So good. Somebody say yes. Please say yes. I'm feeling greedy. All right. So we have our tomato slices. I'm just gonna cut out the little stem part in the middle from the, the one towards the edges. Y'all, I've got, whoever was asking about how to incorporate more veggies, wait till you see, so good. So let me know if anybody didn't see that or if you wanna see it again. I've got an excellent and very easy snack with tomatoes for you. If you like pizza, you'll love it. All right, so now on our bagel with our dill and cream cheese, goat cheese spread, I like tomato, so I'm going to place two on each. I'm gonna use the edge ones. I'm gonna cut I just got the, it. I'm trying to save my tomato slices. I'm hoping somebody wants to see my snack. I'm trying to get the pretty ones saved. All right. 
just cutting out, you know, the little stem part in the middle. Yeah. All right. So not... <laughs> so we've got our bagel, our cream cheese, goat cheese spread, and some tomato slices. The recipe calls for cucumber. Make it, make it. Oh, I'm so excited you said that. Okay, sorry. Focus, Maggie. Okay. I'm going to make it so good. All right. Um, add the cucumbers. My substitution is tomato. If you can have cucumbers, please do. I think the cucumber would go really well with the dill because that dill sauce is bright and the cucumber is a very mild vegetable. Smoked salmon. All right. Again, I just ordered this yesterday through Instacart from BJ's. You can make any um, smoked salmon that you like. This is a treat for me. I'm supposed to eat just white fish, but I saw this in a catalog and I was like, God, I want a bagel with uh, smoked salmon. So I remember the first time I had this, like I said, it was on a cruise. We had room service and I was like, oh my gosh, is that fish raw? It's not, I know it looks raw. This is the closest thing that I get to sushi. I am not a sushi fan, so don't come at me. I'm just a simple girl. But um, it's basically the filet of uh, salmon and they smoke it, you know, like this old technique to, you know, preserve it. So it is cooked and then they slice it in these little thin sheets. So, you can roll it up in like um, a tortilla, or you've probably seen those crab pinwheels. Not crab, what did I say crab? Salmon pinwheels. Um, you can, you know, if you like it even further cooked, you could put this in an omelet. I'm just peeling off. That's the only thing, it's kind of like hard to get at it, but, because I don't want to break the beautiful design, but whatever, we're getting in here. And I'm gonna be pretty liberal with the salmon. If I overdo it, I overdo it on the protein. So it's like really thin sheets. You know what, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna kind of make it into like a, a little ribbon fold if I can. All right, I think this is the last. I'm just arranging it on the smoked salmon, on the bagel, trying to keep it so that we can see everything. Of course, I gotta. All right, so we have our bagel, we have our dill sauce, we have our, our bagel, chaffel, uh, gluten-free, our dill sauce with goat's cheese instead of cream cheese, our tomato instead of cucumber for me, and our smoked salmon. All right, so I'm going to put this away. It's a very creamy texture, salty, if you like that. And it is a fishy fish. Um, if you don't like a very strong fishy fish, then you won't like salmon, but it is excellent. All right, washing my hands. All right. Add the cucumber, smoked salmon, capers, and red onion. All right, so let's do our capers really quick and we're done. And I'm gonna make that tomato snack for you all. Again, just from Walmart, these capers, I think they're from some kind of plant. They're a very like briny. Um... Pickly kind of taste, kind of salty, just a little bit for a garnish. They look like little green beans, <laughs> little green peas. All right, so I'm gonna see. All right, I'm gonna have to arrange these by hand. You wanna kind of spread them out. Now that I have my community tab, thank you all so much on YouTube. Please make sure you are subscribed. That's where I'll be keeping up with everybody. Um, I'm posting my finished products on my community tab so anybody can see what we made. All right, so this is what we have so far. And then the last is the red onion. Oh, I'm getting excited. Okay, focus, Maggie. So my red onion 
looking kind of sad, but I'm going to cut it. I just need a little bit of it, not much. Um, eh. I'm just thinking what order I want to do things, but cutting them. I love the color. <sighs> Y'all, I just, you know, I know it's kind of lame, but I've just started to like fall in love with my food. But, you know, those of us who have struggled with weight, and, you know, have been like thinking that you have to suffer to eat healthy. You really can make it taste good. So I'm really happy when I actually um, find something that I enjoy. Because what that does for me is that lets me know I'm going to keep this weight off. All right. So just peeling the outer skin off of my red onion. Isn't that beautiful purple? Oh, we got a soft spot there. Got to cut that out. We don't want to waste. I'm going to use my same slicer. I want these beautiful rings on my uh, onion. So I'm going to go in this way. And I'm going to do just like I did the tomato. I'm going to cut through the um, slicer, prongs, pongs, whatever you call them. I don't know. And here's a tip, excuse me, when you're uh, cutting vegetables for an ingredient, go ahead and cut the whole thing or go ahead and, excuse me, saute the whole thing. That way you have, you know, when I clean up, when I'm done, I'll have a whole, um, what's it called? You know, little prep container of, um, you know, my onion rings, <laughs> onion rings. Aww. Thank you, Belle. I received that. All right. So on to my, um, just going to separate these little rings because, you know, they're stuck together. And I'm just going to do a little, and I said earlier in the beginning, I like onion. Um, it, I like them mostly cooked. I like that beautiful sauteed flavor on a steak or a burger. But um, if you like them raw, for me, the only ones that I can kind of tolerate raw are these like red onions because the... Um, other ones to me are kind of um, a little bit more pungent. So I'm just putting some green, green, green onion was for our soup. All right. I'm just so happy that you all appreciate this. I'm just putting a little bit and then I will take a nice bite after my picture. So this is our smoked salmon chaffle substitute. Tomato, substitute, goat cheese, substitute, smoked salmon, capers, and onion. All right. Wash my hands. I'm going to get the tomato started. I'm going to add my fruit, take a picture, take a taste, and then the tomatoes will be done, and I'll let you have your uh, morning. <sighs> I'm so excited. Ah! Okay. So I'm going to show you guys a quick um, teeth of the Afro pick. The Afro pick, yes, much better. <laughs> I think the proper name is Pamper Chef. It might be a vegetable slicer or whatever, but Afro pick works for me. You like it, I love it. Hey, you guys, we're all here together. But um, it does help you, and that's good, you know, for teaching, you know, kids safety and how to cook. This will keep your fingers safe while you go through and you just slice down. Okay, I can do it by hand, but when you want them like the same size, hey, use my go go gadgets. Tomatoes. All right. Start cleaning up. y'all haven't eaten today all right come on, hey. i need to run the dishwasher i'm gonna cover it with foil anyway but this one's good so i've got a great snack for you guys this is going to be really easy good morning refuse to lose come on in if anybody's new here welcome welcome to my class uh, feel free to shout out your city your state or your um, country, if you're international. And if you have a YouTube channel, feel free to shout it out. I'll put it on the screen so we can support each other, building the community. 
All right, so I have just lined my air fryer tray with foil. On this, you guys saw that I had my tomato. I'm just putting my tomato slices directly onto the foil. I'm gonna do it this time without any oil. I know when uh, OK Tammy was on, she asked about oil, but I think we get enough from the cheese. So these are the slices of my tomato left over from our bagel. Anybody who's just popping in, it's done. I'm just gonna add my fruit and take a picture and take a taste. Cause I actually eat this stuff, y'all. I'm just cooking for you what I'd be cooking for myself anyway. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Hey, much better. All right, so on your tomatoes, it's only three ingredients. This is number one. Number two, any shredded cheese of your choice. If you were on earlier, you saw that because of my food sensitivity test, I can't have cow dairy, so I shredded my Leclerc goat's cheese. This is it right here. I have my hand crank shredder. I'll show you guys the package. This is another one that I buy in bulk. We have a Sprouts Farmer's Market where I live. I'm in the Atlanta area. Um, you can get it at Sprouts, maybe some other places. And so I just shred my own and I keep it in these prep containers. It'll last me about a week. So you wanna put a healthy pinch of your shredded cheese onto your tomatoes directly. Oh, wait till you see them when they come out of the broiler. All right, so got some cheese on tomato number one. Some cheese on tomato number two. Kids would love this. This is a great way to get extra veggies in. Cheese on tomato number three. So for this one, you wanna use a good melting cheese. I wouldn't do the spreadable cheese on this. We did the spreadable cheese on our bagel. And then nice cheese on tomato number four. Uno, dos, tres, and cuatro. All right, so you see here, we have our cheese on top of our tomato slices. And then the last ingredient It calls for oregano. I don't have oregano, but I do have Italian seasoning. This has oregano in it, but any type of uh, oregano, basil, thyme, anything like that, a liberal pour. So I'm not doing any oil or anything, just your tomato slice, your seasoning, if you guys can see. Hopefully it shows up, and your uh, Italian seasoning. I'm gonna put this in the air fryer. If you have a toaster oven or oven, you wanna go underneath the broiler, maybe three minutes while I'm cleaning up, I'm making my fruit. The cheese is gonna melt down all bubbly and ooey and gooey. So excited. So this is our before. I'm putting it on the french fry setting. I know, I use the air fryer, which is 400, and the heat source for mine is at the top, so I moved it close to the top. All right, so let me clean up, and then I'm gonna add some fruit. One moment, please. My meeting just got canceled. All right, perfect. All right, so let's clean up. All right, oh, I was gonna make my fruit. Let me put my ingredients away, make my fruit and take my picture and take a bite. All right, so I have a special treat I'm excited. For me, the fruits that I can have are low sugar fruits, which are apples, oranges, uh, berries. I got some fresh blackberries. I remember picking these as a kid. It's not lame, it was fun. Um, I grew up here in the South, immigrant family, like a lot of people came for education. Y'all, my air fryer sounds like, I know, horrible. So we didn't have the technology the kids had, but we would pick wild blackberries. My oldest son loves them. 
So I'm literally putting them in a little container for my portion. I don't know, maybe like a half cup. I'm gonna rinse them off and then I'm gonna top them with a little bit of that coconut cream just for presentation because that's how I want to eat it and uh, show you guys the finished product. All right, so greedy. I stop when they start spilling over. So like I said before, getting off artificial sugar was hard. It was about a two week de detox for me, being cranky, nauseous, just all of that, but Mmm, ooh, ooh, mm. that would be good on French toast. All right, y'all, taste test is coming. Again, I can't have cow dairy, so this is from Aldi's. This is the same coconut whipped cream I put on my coffee. So when I eat fruits, you guys saw I made that fruit dip yesterday. That was really good. Okay, that was a bit much, but... <laughs> So, breakfast today is my smoked salmon bagel, fresh fruit with cream. I'm trying to see, I'm gonna set it down and take a picture. Move over bacon, here comes the weed. This will go up on my community tab taking lots of pictures, trying to get a picture with all the different layers in there, the tomato. Some with flash, some without flash, and I'm gonna go check on our tomato snack, which I will also eat. All right, I'm hungry. So this is what I have. The black on the bottom, y'all, I had some blueberries left on my waffle maker, but we've got our bagel, which is a chaffle, tomato, dill sauce, eat Maggie. Mmm, mmm, mm. woo, 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 very bright. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Woo! The lemon. It's excellent. Very lemony. If you don't like lemon so much, maybe half as much lemon because the dill is also very bright. Blackberries with cream. That's calming me down. But yes, that was very bright. All right, you guys, I'm gonna show you our tomatoes. Can you see them sizzling and bubbling? I'm gonna put them back in just for one more minute to get a little bit more brown, then I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna eat one. Excellent, so let me clean up. Belle says you're gonna try this, the smoked salmon. It is excellent. The only thing I would do, and this is what I do y'all, I got a recipe offline, smoked salmon, bagels. It was good. Um, I probably do just a little bit less lemon because it's very bright, but it's a great like uh, spa lunch or brunch. All right, cleaning up. All 
right, so we made our coffee with zero sugar sweetener, half and half from our plant-based half and half, coconut cream and almond milk. Let me put my test results back. What other questions do you guys have um, that I can help you with? Let's clean it up. All right, we're gonna take those out. I'm gonna get a little prep container for my onion. Okay, so the air fryer has landed. All right, just putting my onion away. That's what I mean. Go ahead and cut everything. You know, I have a shelf in the fridge that's literally all like chopped up ingredients. Making an omelet, toss them in. Making soup, toss them in. Making a salad, toss it in. Oh. All right, so I got a little bit more color. I would probably go even more brown, but can you guys see? Oh, All right, I know they're lava hot. Again, plating, I'm using a contrasting plate. So I'm just getting underneath them with a spatula so you guys can see. I may even sprinkle, you could be a little bit more generous on the oregano or Italian seasoning. So the tomato, as you can see, the tomatoes got all limp and you could toss these back like an oyster, which I'm going to do. Um, but if you like pizza, it gives you that cheesy uh, pizza sauce uh, experience because you've got the Italian seasoning or pizza seasoning. And then the way the tomato cooks down underneath the cheese. Hey, refuse to lose. Yes, I use smoked salmon. That was the breakfast for today. And I did get some pictures. So I'm going to take a picture of my tomatoes. Excellent snack. You could do a whole tomato. Slice it. Cheese, oregano, or Italian seasoning. So I don't know, Bell. I know, Amethyst, doesn't that look good? All right. And the thinner you slice your tomatoes, literally like in one bite. <laughs> Y'all, it is so good because you get the um, tomato. If you have like a really like nice ripe beefsteak tomato, just slice it thin. You get that crispiness from the cheese of your choice. This is shredded goat's cheese. Use um, mozzarella, Parmesan. I think the recipe calls for Parmesan. You want that nice like salty aged cheese and then sprinkle with your Italian seasoning or oregano. It's so good. You have the crispy edges from the cheese. You have the tomato literally like melting and disintegrating in your mouth. And then you have the, the bright, y'all, I'm going to finish this. It's my morning snack. And then I'm going to eat my salmon too. But I think that's all you guys. Um, I hope this was helpful. Someone sent me a recipe for a snatched waist salad. So that's what I'm going to be making later today. I'll look at my schedule, find a time block and I'll post it. And, um, you know, we'll see. I'll make my substitutions and see how it goes. If you have anything that you want me to cook for you, put the 
recipe in the comments or in the chat and I'll find it and then I'll get the ingredients and make it with my substitutions for you. But this right here, winner, winner, chicken dinner, um, great way to eat vegetables. You could do this with eggplant. You could do this with zucchini. Um, any vegetable that you want to slice that's uh, in the flavor of like a, a good Italian dish, squash, um, like I said, eggplant, tomato, zucchini, anything that's good like with a red sauce, excellent. Mm. 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 All right, you guys, until our next video later today, goodbye, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You'll be back for that. All right, you guys, I eat every day, so you get a post every day.